Montserrat have been as low as 205th in the FIFA World Rankings, but fast forward to now, sitting pretty at 178, nearly 30 places higher. All of this from a nation with a population of around 5,000. Montserrat is actually the fifth lowest populated nation or territory in the world, and the other four above aren't FIFA registered, they don't play international football. So Montserrat, technically, the smallest footballing nation in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But despite this, the Emerald Boys have some of the the best fans in the world. I'm sure that, uh, that James Connolly, who joins us today, would agree with that. A stellar 14-year club career, nearly 400 appearances and 15 caps for Montserrat Comms. Thanks for joining us today. How are we doing? Yeah, okay, guys. Yeah, good. Good, good, good. good. Thanks, Coms. Thanks, Coms. Putting some time aside. Really, really appreciate it. No, no as, as, I've, as I said, kind of before we before we jumped on, as is the, the channel, it's all about Minnow Nation football. This is all going to be about Montserrat. But before we get onto that, we've got to talk about that that kind of club career, that stellar club career, as, as Tom put it. And kind of when you when you sort of take stock of the number of the number of games over the the, the long period that it's been. It's it's some achievement. I actually recently watched an interview with you from a few years ago when you were you were talking about the challenges of of non league training evenings, games up and down yeah, yeah, the country, yeah. getting back at stupid o'clock, going to work the next day, and, and that whole sort of crux of it. What's continued to motivate you through all of those years? In all honesty, I mean. I'm not even, I'm not going to sit here and act like I've been doing evening training the whole time. I mean, as, as I've progressed and as we've progressed, I mean, obviously when I was younger, I was in the full-time setup when I was at Crystal Palace. Yeah. Um, but then as you've seen for like probably the, the next six, seven seasons or seven years, I was playing in playing non-league pretty much two evenings a week in a game on a Saturday. Yeah, um, and it is tough. As I said, then it is tough. It, it, I was actually having this conversation the other day with a few people, and when you're when you're working, so some people are working from six a.m. or four a.m. Mm. Some are doing delivery drivers or sitting at, sitting at a desk all day or even if you're doing something active. I mean, me, I was doing personal training, which isn't... I was doing personal training and sports coaching. So, I mean, I'm teaching classes. Sometimes I'd be getting involved with classes. So then in the evening, go to training or play a game. Mm. It, it's difficult. It, it, it can be very difficult. And you've got to give props to the, the players that do do it. I, I know, obviously, there's, there's good money in it, but... It's more so for the the passion and the enjoyment of doing it. I mean, there's players that do find it tough. Um, we we had a car school when we was going, and literally it would be the person driving, driving the other two or three people in the car. Most of the time, would be falling asleep or asleep yeah. in the car, um, getting some rest on the way to training or on, on the way to a game. Um, people don't really understand. I know, obviously, as a fan or whatever, you're looking at it and you. You're, you're looking at a player who might, might not be performing and you're like, wow, they're, they're playing rubbish. But sometimes there can be reasons behind it, which yeah. is more the meets the eye of just not playing well or not wanting to play well. That player may be tired, mentally drained even, or physically mm. drained. Um, so it's hard work. You've got, to, you've got to make sure you're physically fit, mentally fit, and, and you've got to try and prepare as well as you can. People are trying to get meals in where they can. It's yeah. not like when when you're in a pro game, pro game, and like mm. all your meals are are put put in front of you yeah. at the right times and whatnot, pre match here and whatever. You might be meant to have a pre match three three and a half hours before the game, but that you're tra you're driving. So if you're yeah. driving in that time, you you got no chance. So it is difficult. Um, I mean, the last few seasons I've been mainly training in the mornings. Um, which just free up a little bit of your day. So mm. for me, it's been, I mean, I've still been doing my work alongside that. I've stopped the personal training to say, I mean, it's not my full-time job. I still do bits here and there, mm. but my main, my main jobs now, my coaching. So, I mean, yeah. what I would normally do is I'd train in the morning then I'd go and coach after. 
so it makes it that little bit easier to perform well in training and and then performing in games i mean still on on a tuesday if there's games i might have had a coaching session and i'm off to a game but it has been a little bit easier but yeah for anyone that's literally just playing non league two evenings a week in a game on a saturday it can, it can be very difficult yeah i mean this season you know been part of that boring wood squad with that crazy fa cup journey you know an inc yeah. incredible incredible cup campaign alongside obviously a fellow yeah. fellow countryman in, in adrian clifton as well yeah what, what was that like i mean that the away day win at bournemouth the journey to goodison how would you like to sum up that experience um i mean you can you can sum it up into so many words but to actually be in it and live it is um is amazing it's always tough when you when you're doing a cup run people don't really see the back end of it and i think it it did affect us a little bit on the back end of the season having we got to the fifth round and i yeah. mean as as you saw it was only other i think it was six prem teams championship uh, and us in the um, <laughs> yeah. in the fifth round and that's why it was on a tuesday night um, not tuesday thursday night because it was only expected to be really premiership and championship teams they don't expect anyone else to be in so what that done for us is that meant uh we had a tuesday and a saturday game postponed mm. alongside the three or four games we'd already had postponed um so then coming off the back of the cup run with niggles injuries and then we've already got six games in hand therefore yeah. then that left us with two and a half months of playing saturday tuesday every yeah. week huge congestion. it's tough yeah it's tough but putting that aside the actual memories of the cup runs i mean we was in the quarterfinals of the fa trophy mm. um doing very well we at the time we was fourth in the league and we got to the fifth round of the fa cup i mean at that time the spirits around the club were unbelievable um at the time we was a little bit disappointed to get Bournemouth not because they're a bad team or anything but just because when you get to the third round or the fourth yeah. round you, mm -hmm. you you you're wanting that that fairy tale cup yeah cup tie aren't you really because you're expecting not expecting but the, the chances are in the other team's favor if you're pulling out a championship or league one yeah. team you're you're very much thinking right we could get beaten mm. um so you're wanting to get a like chesterfield did i guess they got chelsea away yeah amazing so we're thinking ah we got bournemouth fifteen thousand, i think it is or eighteen thousand. um and at the time they was top of the championship so you're also thinking it's not even like a team that's yeah. bottom of the championship and yeah and that morale's low and you're going in there thinking right we can really do a job but to be fair the game plan that um uh, the manager set out for that day was really well and we 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 went out and got the job done and i think i think they may have underestimated us a little bit in terms of how they prepared i think they might have just thought they was going to be able to pass it around us and and go around the sides of us and then just like whip it into the box um and it kind of played into our hands a little bit don't get me wrong they had some chances when your luck's going with you they go over the bar hit the post whatever but you you, you earn that little bit of luck i guess um and we scored and kept a clean sheet which meant when we went into the fifth round we still hadn't conceded a goal yeah. in in the fa cup the only t only team in there to not concede i think yeah. um which was unbelievable <laughs> absolutely unbelievable and then we pull out goodison away um an amazing cup tie i mean one of our players was an uh a proper proper everton fan um so for him kane smith that was an amazing amazing thing as well and just in general to be able to experience that with the the, the players that i experienced it with was was amazing mm -hmm. it was like you can't put it to words it was unbelievable but yeah in general it was a great experience and um one that will stay with with all of us i'm sure forever i mean as you've already alluded to um adrian um he scored goals in the the round against afc wimbledon he scored a couple of really big cup goals 
um, for us. So I'm sure for him as well and for his son to be there and see it, uh, that was amazing. And, uh, and and what does next season hold for you? Back at Boreham Wood or to be confirmed? No, no, no. I just I actually just tweeted out about that a little while ago that I won't be there next season. Um, time to move on from that one for mm-hmm. both myself and the club. Not sure if I'm going to stay in the kind of full time setup or mm-hmm. if I'm going to go back to part time. Mm-hmm. Kind of waiting it up at the moment. What works best for me? Obviously, coming to the back end of my not the back end of my career, thirty one, thirty two, but it's time yeah. to start also thinking about career after football. Yeah. So mm-hmm. now for me, I'm okay. kind of thinking, don't get me wrong, if the right full-time offer comes, then I'm happy to stay full-time. But at the same time, if the right non-league um, part-time offer comes in, then mm-hmm. yeah, I can take that and I can then start to push my business in the daytime now. So yeah. so it, either we'll, we'll roll with the punches and happily go with it. I mean, it's it's just how life goes on and you move forward with it. Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing about obviously National League, National League South, like obviously when you're called up to international duty, it's not it's not the same as like the Premier League in terms of there's like a two week break and no games. Like, like for yeah. you, when it's, it's international duty and you've got to go to the Caribbean, like yeah. I suppose it's a slightly weird question, but I suppose that for you with like your coaching and everything, does that mean that that's just a period of time with, with no games and no coaching? So does it detract from the, does it detract from the paycheck? it can do a little bit yeah it can do um obviously depending what you what's going on what i'm able to get recovered if i'm able to get like coaches to cover sessions sometimes people are busy and and you can't get covered for your sessions it's just how it goes you might have to cancel reimburse people or whatnot obviously obviously you try and make it work for the um the kids and the, the the players in your sessions, you try and make sure that they're covered for and catered for beforehand. Um, but it can be difficult, as you said, like I used to work, when I was working like full time in a school, it would be mm. difficult then because it never, it would never ever seem to be like in term time. Yeah. Like, like even now, it would literally be the last four or five weeks of school and it would, it's just, it would just be different, difficult. Um, so that's why being like self-employed has always helped because mm-hmm. it makes it manoeuvre a little bit easier. Um, there's, there, there have been a couple of players for Montserrat that haven't been able to come because they work in schools and they just haven't yeah. been able to get the time off. Um, so, yeah, it is very difficult. The, the players do work really hard to, um, to manoeuvre their schedules yeah. and make it work. Um, it's not all glitz and glam and people think, oh, yeah, they're, they're in it. Like, we're just making extra money and getting loads loads of money from it. I mean, we we don't we don't get an extra penny for what we do. We, mm. Mon- uh, Montserrat try and reimburse you for the loss of earnings um, okay. where possible. Um, but, yeah, it's not like you're, it's extra money on top of your football yeah. salary. Yeah. So... So sometimes you do you do give up a little bit in terms of losing a little bit of money here and there or whatnot, but you just got to try and do what you can. And so for me, I always just try try and get the sessions covered. Yeah. If I can't, then I got a got a way up whether I can uh, afford to lose that much money. And so so far, so yeah. far, touch wood, it's, um, I've been able to. The the the, the sacrifices that that kind of people probably don't see that that footballers make to go and play on that international stage and then from like like the club's perspective so if you're playing for a national league or a national league south club if those international windows fall when there are busy periods of games do do they just have to they just have to let you you, it's i guess or is it down to the player to kind of make that call it it must be tough to like no i'm going to be honest with you some some players actually really get pressured to not go yeah, uh, really. that's yeah. That's a that's a big problem from from League One down. From League One yes. down. Yeah. That's a that's a it's a real problem um with international break because mm. players are getting pressured by their their um their clubs yeah. to not be going. Obviously it's not because the club 
doesn't appreciate a player playing on international stage, it's good for the player. And it's also good exposure for the club that their players are playing yeah. at international level and they've been able to attract their players. But I mean, obviously looking at it from the club's point of view, they might be in a promotion chase or a relegation yeah. battle. And there's no game in, a, in any league that you can just throw away and be like, it doesn't matter. I mean, yeah. maybe at the end of the season, if you're mid-table and you can't get promotion, can't get relegated, then you could say technically on, on a points tally that that game, them, those points don't matter. Um, but most of the time you're in season is still when there's a lot to play for. So I do understand that. I do understand when managers like ask the question and, and whatnot. I mean, I think there was one season that I was at Maidenhead, I think it might have been a year or two ago, and we was playing on TV. Mm. Um, and actually, at that time, we had three players. So we had me and Inti, yeah, who also plays for Montserrat now, and we had a player called um, Jerry. And Jerry he Wilkshire. was playing... Yeah, he was yeah. playing for Brit British Virgin Islands. So, yeah. if you have three, if you have three players, you you can get your games um, suspended, called off. Yeah. Um, but we had a TV game, and obviously that's good revenue yeah. for the club. <laughs> yeah. So they was in a real tricky predicament with then like. So not sure that. if that. that I think in the end, what the league done is they said, listen, we'll be fair and we'll let you call one game off yeah, and play that game, play the TV game. Um, that's the best we can do for you. We, uh, we, can't, we can't guarantee that the TV televised game would be able to be rescheduled. Yeah. So I think it was taken 50-50 and yeah. they went half and half. Yeah. Best of both, best of both. That, yeah. that kind of, it kind of, that sort of, this this sort of conversation topic sort of neatly segues into speaking about the the mighty Emerald Boys and sort of what wind the clock back to that that first call up back in in 2015. Now, now I yeah. watched, uh, uh, I think from a couple of years ago with your, with yourself and, and Woods Garnis comms talking about that yeah. first call up. And am I right in saying that you actually had no idea you could play for Montserrat? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no. At, at, at that time, I, I, I had no idea. I mean, this is yeah. obviously bef before I even tried. I think it was the, I think it was probably about a year before. It might have been twen end of twenty thirteen, start okay. of twenty fourteen, and um, you had Woodsy. Um, mm -hmm. I think it was Mace, like Calvin Petrie, a few of them. Sure. Alex Dyer was probably was involved as well. Mm -hmm. I think it was may maybe Dean Morgan. They was all out somewhere i'm not even sure where they were i can't even remember but they was away and i was like what <laughs> sandy beaches <laughs> blue sea where are you he's like oh, what's the like, bit oh, of this on, yeah we're on, we're on international i was like with who <laughs> um turned out it was montserrat and they was like oh like you got are you montserratian like right? and i was like no nah, i'm not i'm a uh, i'm saint lucian i'm pretty sure i'm like Whenever I've spoken to like like to my grandparents or spoken like with the grandparents, it's like when they go home, they go back to Saint Lucia. Mm. Um, so I was speaking to my dad one day about it, and he was like, "Why don't you? Why don't you? Why why don't you try and play?" And I was like, do "You understand how the like the, the international <laughs> st stuff works? Like, I can't just I can't like, just turn up and play, Dad. Yeah, like he's a, he's a vivid football fan himself. He's played football <laughs> manager and whatever. So I'm like, surely you're not like." you're not being silly here. And he was like, no, you do know your, your granddad was born in Montserrat and then moved to St. Lucia where he met your nan. Yeah. Oh, and then okay. they came over. So when they go home, they go and visit friends and family in St. Lucia. But mm -hmm. he was actually born, his birth mm. certificate shows he was born in Montserrat. Mm. Soon as my dad told me that on the phone, <laughs> uh, spoke to Woodsy, uh, Woodsy spoke to the manager, who then was Lenny, um, okay. and it everything just rolled. It was like so smooth and so perfect. Mm. It was World Cup qualifiers in about four or five months. Yeah, uh, in two months' time, there was going to be a a training week, 
mm-hmm. at St. George's, mm-hmm. oh, um, nice. which we had luckily been able to hire out. And basically it was like a, it was a trial, but not a yeah. trial. Basically it was just like anyone you know that's Montserratian and plays football, get them there. Try and get them there. We'll get them in rooms. We've got rooms for the for the for the four days or the three days that we're staying there. Get them there and play. So I said to my brother, who was at QPR at the time, I said, "Listen, come. Um, even if you don't want to play right now because you're still very young and whatnot's going on within the um, the QPR circuit, yeah, come see what it's like and." then can make your decisions. Um, so went there and literally about 70% of the boys that went o- along to St. George's came over to the World Cup qualifiers. So that was that was pretty crazy. It, ha- it all happened so fast, yeah. to be honest. I played England C in November. Right. Um, oh, okay, yeah. Yes, because I've, I've, I've played England C, it was in October or November against Turkey. So I just, I played that game, then like fast forward two months time, had this conversation with them and then gone, February had gone to the camp mm. and then two months later it was out, out in Curacao. Mm. You, you're suddenly, you've gone from that and then you're, you're debuting for Montserrat in World Cup qualification, just mad against Curacao. Yeah. It must have been bad. And then you look back at that now, um, seven, seven years on or whatever it is, close to potentially at the time what would have been one of the one of the probably one of the biggest upsets thinking of, of kind yeah. of where where they were i was looking at this um earlier so at the time that curacao team across 2015 they jumped from 151st in the rankings to 75th um oh, wow. i think Mon- i think Montserrat at the time were about i think you were about yeah we were one, still one, like one, eight, one, eight, or... one eight six or yeah yeah you were it yeah, was, I think we, I, th- I think we was actually below two hundred at that stage still. It could, yeah, it could well have been. It could have still been yeah. at that, that point in it. Yeah, and it was, yeah, yeah. it was, it's kind of, it's one of them, isn't it? It's kind of, I don't know how sort of well documented or how well publicised that fixture was, but they scored late on in that second leg as well to actually then take the aggregate lead. So it was so close to a, to a, to a huge upset. What are your memories of, of that kind of that isolated double legger as like the start of your, your international journey? You know what? Montserrat? I think every single one of us remember that so, so well yeah. and, and could like almost tell you the whole script of, of that, that time. Cause I mean, yeah. apart from like five or six of us, it was pretty much a team that was thrown together. Mm. Um, don't get me wrong, we all knew each other from like playing against each other non-league or, mm. or like, I mean, there's like five, four or five of the boys that, that live right next to each other. I mean, me, Woodsy, Mace, uh, Solly, obviously my brother and whatnot. Yeah. We all grew up, we all grew up around like five, 10, 15 minutes away from each other. So we all knew each other from really? like the same kind of area. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we all knew each other anyway, but then add into the fact that you've got people that have played against each other, or maybe not like the Southern and Northern boys, cause they're in, they would have been in different, um, uh, sections for half of their career. But yeah, we all knew each other was all thrown together and had a good training camp. Uh, had a few days in Barbados and then went on to Curacao and we didn't really know you, you, when you, half the time you, you match up with some of these teams in the uh, CONCACAF nations and you, you don't really know much about the players mm-hmm. you might know that the team the teams are decent um, they've had a couple of good results all we knew really is that they had just got Je- uh, Patrick Cliver yeah. as manager yeah. and they was they had heavily just been bringing in a lot of Dutch um, players, yeah, Dutch Dutch based players, yeah. yeah. Um, so we just went into the game. We knew our game plan, and we was we was actually playing really really well. Um, we went a, I think we went a goal down to a, a sloppy, not a mistake, but something that you know, like from a defensive point of view, you say we could have done better with mm. that. Um, we went and equalised in the first half, gone in at 1-1 and we have then been very unlucky. Um, the referee at the time didn't give us anything. 
Um, I remember, I think it might, it might even have been Cuco Martina. Um, we played a through ball mm. and he's, the, the game's 1-1 at this time. He's slipped over and he was the last defender. Yeah. Um, our player would have been through on goal and he's grabbed the ball with his hands. And he's got a yellow card in the fruit and we got a free yeah. kick, which should definitely have been a sending off or otherwise we would have been through on goal 1v1. Mm. And just little fine margins like yeah. that and decisions that was going against us. I think I even think we got give, a penalty given away um, for, a, for a handball of where his hand's close to his body or something like that. Um, and we've lost 2-1, but had the decision gone a different direction earlier on when it was still 1-1, that game's completely different. Yeah. Um, then we go to our place, 2-1 um, down, and we concede first, disappointing. Mm. Then we pull it back to 2-1, two, two so yeah. it's 3-3 three, three on aggregate, and we're, we've done really well. Um, we've pushed for it. We've, try, uh, we've worked really hard. I mean, I, obviously, I, I think that's a lot of the players' first game playing in that kind of heat at mm. an intense game. Yeah. Um, so, so the legs and the, the body started to um, die a little bit. And we've conceded a, a, a counter-attack, actually. Yeah. Um, we had a chance before. Should have scored. Missed it. Ball's gone out for a throw and... We're saying to the player, kick it, like, put it into Rosette. <laughs> and he's kind of just clipped it out. They've got the ball back in quickly, threaded a pass ahead. and they've yeah. scored. And and it's just massive disappointment. But then you, you're looking at it and even though you're disappointed, you're looking at it, it's like they're meant to be one of the top teams. Mm. We've given them a right game. We feel unjust to how the results the results gone. Let's get back on the horse. And then because of all the uh, FIFA corruption and stuff, you've obviously, you obviously know so much money was being kept away from the actual game and whatnot that Montserrat just don't have the funds to, to arrange friendlies and get all the boys out there. Yeah. So we literally went dormant for like three, three years. Yeah. Um, and didn't play no games. And then as soon as the, the whole FIFA thing's cleared up and they've got the Nations League and yeah. we've actually got consistent games yeah. flowing and money money being pumped into the CONCACAF, mm. we uh, we was back on the horse and we got we got games again. But it was it was crazy times because we're looking at it and we're thinking we we don't know if we're ever gonna play again. Yeah. Obviously yeah. the boys are getting older and you don't you, you don't know if you're gonna play again or whatnot, which was a little bit disappointing. Yeah, I mean, you've, so, got, you've got, I mean, the way you said, you know, the speed of the whole transition of, of all of a sudden you can play for Montserrat and then a couple of months later you're then playing World Cup qualifiers and then you've got three years until your sort of next appearance. I mean, I, I think, you know, it just goes to show how important obviously the, the CONCACAF Nations League is to the to the region, particularly like the smaller nations. Yeah. Like now that you've, yeah, got, yeah. Now that you've got like steady games and you're a regular part of the squad, like, Obviously, as you say, you kind of know a lot of these players from like way back when, or even playing against them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much do you like look forward to these international breaks? Obviously, you got one coming up. Like, like how how much do you look forward to it? Oh, massively, massively. Um, I mean, obviously, as you get older, some of the boys have kind of retired or mm -hmm. playing lower levels, and they're just making sure they're keeping fit for when it mm -hmm. does come around to international or they're playing lower level you're not seeing people as often and just as you get older you, you people move away or they might move a little bit further out of london uh, for instance so like things just change you don't see people as often so i mean when we do go away it's like a massive get together yeah. um and we enjoy our time on the field and off the field so i mean we work hard in training and then it's like, it's just a massive get together. Like when, even when it's like pool time or cool down in the pool or whatever, or just get the leg down in the pool and whatnot. It's, it's consistent banter. And it's a, it's a great group of boys. I mean, yeah. we, we've got a group chat and the group chat's always going off and people talking and everyone's chatting away and 
people try and go if like some of the boys do events if the boys have got events on people will try and get down and we still try and support each other and yeah and help each other out so we've got good unity we love being out there we love being together um i'm not sure the whole the whole thing of how it's going to play out i'd love to speak to you guys again after and and have a chat with you about about how it did go and 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 what went on out there and see what what the restraints are with obviously covid and whatnot yeah. it would be great to have a before and after conversation but but yeah no it would be great to get out there for sure and we're all looking forward to it the so this is we've got nations league what's it they call it i think it's the 22 23 yeah. version of nations league I mean, yeah, since, yeah, you're, yeah. since you're since you're montserrat debut comps you've done Nations League qualifiers, the first round of Nations League 1920, World Cup qualifiers, you've been involved in that Gold Cup qualification as well. I was, again, you could, I, I'm, I'm sort of big into my stats a little bit. Now, I was, yeah. and I was looking at some stuff before before we had this call with you because there was this whole thing of Montserrat, tiny, tiny footballing nation and, and let's be fair, didn't get great results. So, like, since they, since Montserrat became a FIFA member in 1996, in their first yeah. tw 22 games, so up until 2014, they'd played, um, they played 22, won two, drawn one, lost 19. Since that yeah. Curacao double legger and including those results, you've played 17, won seven, drawn five and lost five. So like the record that is just immeasurably better, it kind of, it just almost adds weight to that, that whole thing that you're saying around the the group that you've got there and how well you get on and it you know a lot of the team are UK based but when you play when you put on that Montserrat jersey the results show that there is just a real sense of doing it together for, together, for Montserrat for, sure, for the yeah. nation yeah. and kind of like why why do you think that is is it do you think it's the, the opportunity on the international stage and the fact that you've got such a good close bond with these guys just all comes to all comes to fruition on the pitch for Montserrat delivering these i mean that upturn the upturn in results there is mad really if you think about it yeah massively i mean it's just the it's the backing as well i mean it's not just the players obviously we're out there doing it on the pitch but i mean the staff that are with us um they're doing it because they want to do it and they want to be there and they want to help us the people that are involved and then you've got the people on the island that have, have suffered or have not still suffering but it's hard they've got mm -hmm. limited trade and stuff and the opportunities on the island have been really limited since obviously before i think there was a documentary that came out on amazon about the music studios and stuff like that and the the island was booming you would have like craziest carnival parties which they still do but like now you've got half the air, um, island, the capitals yeah. still inhabitable. Yeah. Um, and so like when we're there, we see what's going on and we see, see how it is, but it's everyone's loving and kind and, yeah. and wants you to do well. I mean, you'd be walking up the hill and you'd be halfway, halfway up the hill and someone would be driving by like drawing a lift and whatnot and drop you off to yeah. the hotel. And, and these are just people, that you, they don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. They, yeah. they they want to they want to do it they want to help out and even the people that aren't there the Montserratians that aren't there but you've got Montserratians in the UK up north down south London America um, wherever whenever we've got games or when we don't have games you've got people reaching out talking to you like you guys are doing us proud and whatnot yeah. so when we talk of this togetherness it's not just us in the camp is it's as a nation yeah um brilliant we're, we're actually we're actually doing this together and challenging together uh, five thousand on the island and, and all the others that are not living on the island um we're doing it to put Montserrat on the map and keep yeah. that going obviously we, obviously when you're in that 90 minutes and on that um on that pitch you want to do it you want to win regardless hands down that's what you want to do but everything else that comes with it we're we're doing it to 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 help and raise the profile of the of the country and and help boost and push i mean because i mean every one of us that that went it's, it's home 
we 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 um, we all call it home. Yeah, we love being there. we love being there. Um, unfortunately, we haven't been able to to get back there since COVID, um, which is a big shame. Hopefully, that can get sorted out soon, so that we can all get back back to being there and playing there because we we love playing at our home ground. Um, through what we've been able to do and whatnot, we've had a, a new hotel be built there, which is right near the stadium as well. Yeah. So it'd be lovely to be able to see the see the new facilities that mm. have been built, which is which has come off the back of what we're doing. But it's not about like, oh yeah, we want credit because of what. Well, it's just we're doing this together. We want to see what we can help doing. I mean, there's good people doing good things. Um, there's charities trying to help get medical um, medical supplies over there because I think the the nearest um, cardiatric hospital or something is in Antigua. Yeah, really. Um, so just yeah, so just there's 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 little things like the, like that that are, that people would want to get better and help with the island. So I mean, yeah. When 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 you hear a player say we do we, we're in it together we do this together it's we're not even just talking about as a group we're we're, we're legitimately talking about as an as a nation and yeah. and every every Montserratian is in this together and we, we want to push and and raise the profile and get better together I mean you, you look at the record and you look at the support that we've had during that record we didn't perform in the Gold Cup we 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 let ourselves down you look at some of the goals they're poor goals I mean I, in other another day another game so we was a little bit disappointed that we didn't get the get the result that we wanted but you would never have even known we lost mm -hmm. the, the, all the fans are messaging oh, we're proud of you guys whatever happened um thank you and whatnot and and that means so much and that's why we say that we do it together because it is a, we're, we're a whole family and and that's what it is you look at the support um, I remember obviously I'm wearing the, the new shirt when they did that launch event in Shoreditch. Yeah, absolutely. And like the support yeah. that was there from obviously bowl football, classic football shirts and, and all the fans yeah, and the fan base. It's, it is a real, the, the fan base is genuinely incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously for you as well, in, in 2018, you'd already played some games, but then your brother, obviously Brandon, makes his, makes yeah. his debut as well. What was that like for you? What was that like for the family? Obviously, you two sharing the pitch. Yeah, it was it was amazing to be honest. Because I mean, like obviously, where we both play and we've both played, I mean, it's hard to even see each other play, let alone <laughs> yeah, let alone let yeah. alone play with each other. Um, so we've always struggled to see each other um, get games. I mean, since we've both been in uh, in and around first team setups. We, we've hardly seen each other play and progress. I mean, when I saw my brother at the training camp play, that was almost the first time I played with my played with my brother and seen him in a in a professional environment, strutting his stuff and doing what he does. And and I was like, okay, cool. And then we obviously <laughs> we, we we've gone away and and played together, and it was just so enjoyable i mean we room together as well so we get to spend a bit more time together because um prior to that he was playing up north for yeah, two yeah, yeah. three years so it wasn't even seeing seeing him too often um so then we've been able to room together play together fight in the battle together yeah. in the trenches and and winning together and it's so you've got the real family affair mm. amongst a family affair. Yeah. So it, it's a, it's crazy. It's not many people can say they've been able to do that. Obviously you've got the Taylor brothers yeah, as yeah. well. And it just, yeah. Yeah. it just shows how tight knit it's been. And it's, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing. I can't really put it into words. I mean, I had to play against my brother this season and that was weird. Yeah. That was really weird. I mean, luckily, or not unluckily, whatever way you want to look at it, we didn't, um, I was playing defence midfield, he was playing defence midfield, so we didn't actually yeah. really, at any point, get in combat yeah. against each other. But seeing each other play from a different light now, and it's, <laughs> you, you see another view yeah. on it, and you're not, 
you're not wanting you're wanting your brother to do badly because you want to <laughs> win or like it, it's yeah. however you look at it and, it and it was weird again but yeah no like it was another occasion which was very weird uh, like hopefully don't get that too many times I mean the Neville brothers done it and I mean if one was playing on the, the left and one was playing on the right and 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 Philip got on the overlap and Neville had to sm and Gary had to smash him I mean that would have been in that, that must have been interesting because I, it was difficult but Honestly, play, playing alongside my brother was, it is a dream come true mm -hmm. um, to be able to represent this great nation with with all my family, but to yeah. do it alongside my brother as well is amazing. And him coming in has added some, some quality, um, some real quality to the team. And hopefully there's more, more players out there, young players that, that, see how well it's going and, and mm -hmm. come and mm -hmm. come and help us progress even further yeah oh 100 percent. The, the there's a there's a number of of players that you wouldn't think that that have monstration sort of eligibility isn't it maybe we'll touch on that in, in, in just a sec but yeah. just, just kind of just kind of quickly on on everything Concacaf what it's been like the last couple of years, it feels like there's, it's getting bigger. It feels like there's more eyes on it. You've touched on the corruption side of things, actually getting investment into CONCACAF, the Nations League that was kind of born, that just created this additional, well-needed, decent tournament for all the nations for plenty of fixtures and 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 just eyes on, eyes on the sport in that region. We've got the 22-23 um, campaign that kicks off soon. Thought, like, thoughts on the draw and, and kind of what does it feel like being part of or sort of playing in it as it's as everything around CONCACAF is getting bigger? Do you know what? Honestly, it feels like so long ago that we um, played in Nations League last time. I mean... Really? Yeah. The, yeah, the last game we played in the Nations League was, um, was pre... Uh, COVID. Yeah, yeah, twenty. Um, yeah, so it would yeah. have been it would have been the Saint Lucia game that we played, um, and I think that the Saint Lucia game was in March twenty nineteen. Yeah, wow. So yeah. really going on what's that? Three years. Yeah, yeah over three that years we, yeah. that we last played in the Nations League. So when I was seeing the the draw, I was trying to work out like what teams we had and 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 where they'd come from, and I mean. Bermuda got relegated yeah. from the A, Group yep. A. And I thought we would have had a team that got promoted from the C, which I don't think we do. No, no, no you've, your which, draw which, is... Which is group. quite interesting. We've oh, got yeah. a really tough group. Yeah. It is. I mean, there's, is. There's, there's three teams that have stayed in the B League and an A. Yeah. yeah, which which is which is really interesting. So, but it's fine. I mean, you've got to play. It's, in all honesty, it's it's great to play different nations and see what they're about. Yeah. Um, and it's 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 nice because I mean every other com every other league or competition we've been in so far, we've played uh, El Salvador for some reason. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> just, you were just you just buzzing the El Salvador weren't in your group again. Yeah. yeah, which makes no which makes no sense to me. And don't get me wrong, I mean I really enjoy playing against El Salvador. They're good games. They're tight games. Mm. Um, apart from the game they came to us and they beat us two 0 they went ahead and we was chasing the game and they scored to make it two 0 But still, it was a, a a fairly tight game. But they're very much a possession based team and they play good football. Mm. But they're good games. But it's just like why do we? get El Salvador every single time um, not only because they're a good team but just because it's like it'd be nice to visit somewhere else yeah, or, yeah. Uh, and yeah. play, someone, play someone else see what other nations have to offer and yeah, um, yeah obviously you've got that group you've got Haiti lots of French players play here playing that the higher leagues in, in France yeah Bermuda, like you say a good side and, and the first game against yeah. Guyana obviously you'll probably know a few of their players as well from Yes, you know, yeah, yeah, very much so. Like, like, that, that's such a big game, that first game. A bit of a must-win going into this tournament as well. What are, what, what are the aspirations for, for this Montserrat team? Is it You're now looking at a really tough group. 
Is it still, yeah. you know what, we're going to go out there and we are going to we are going to push and try and win this group? Yeah, of course. It's That's all it ever is. Yeah. I mean, we're a little bit maybe naive in how we go into games or into tournaments with the fact that it's just we want to win every game yeah. Yeah. and we we want to win every group um so we don't know too much about bermuda and don't know too much about haiti mm -hmm. um obviously we know a few of the players from guyana so we know a little bit about them but again we still don't know exactly mm -hmm. how they play and whatnot so but as any tournament you go into, the, the first game is so important because that sets you off with, mm. with, with how you go along with the rest of your campaign. I mean, when we were in the World Cup qualifiers, we probably had a sloppy draw to Antigua, yeah. Yeah. which we felt we could win, which instantly after the first game basically means you're waiting on other teams and other results. Um, so... Hopefully this, this campaign we can get straight stuck in with a win first off. And I think the thing okay. about this group is, whilst it's tough, I, I, hopefully there's an element at least that anyone can beat anyone. So it's, yeah. it's you know, you've, obviously if you win this group, it would be amazing. It'd be Gold Cup, instant qualification. Yep. But I think it, it's a harder group, but it, it, it might be easier in some ways because you're not going to have to catch a team that's going to win every game. You know, so yeah, it's it, will be it is true. P people will be taking points off each yeah. other. Mm. Um, hopefully, hopefully, people will be taking points off each other apart from us. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we always just look at it as it's a chance to showcase ourselves and and again go and prove something to the world and yeah and um, and just go and win some games for us. That's how we see it. So it will be now in September. We'll be able to go and really have a strong push and see where that takes us in terms of of next year you know obviously there's there's the immediate thing gold cup qualification but but is there half an eye half an eye on that 48 team world cup you know it's it's so tough for the sides that aren't the usa canada and mexico to to get into the world cup from from concacaf the next world cup is being held in the us canada mexico so i'm not sure how they're going to do that in terms of instant Yeah, I'm not sure. Does that, does that give... The, yeah, exactly. Uh, doesn't that mean they get instant qualification? Yeah, so it, it then... should do. Um, but, you know, CONCACAF will obviously get more spaces going into it. Um, and there's... Obviously, we've seen Canada this time go from the first stage all the way through Yeah, they, they, they went all the way... They went all the way through, didn't they? Yeah. They... Um, they cleaned up. They done really well. I was watching some of the, uh, Alfonso Davies' live streams. They were yeah, amazing. yeah, so, uh, yeah. Is there so, half an um, eye on yeah, that? they done really well. Is there half um, do you know what? I'm going to be honest. With everything that's gone on with the whole uh, COVID thing, I think mm -hmm. like we've kind of just we did before keep it like one came campaign at a time, even like one game at a time. Mm -hmm. um, but even more so now, mm -hmm. with like you, you can, if anything, COVID kind of taught you to not look too far ahead and kind of focus on now and that's that's always been relevant to football in general you kind of see managers talk about it we're only thinking about the next game but in life as well that's become a little bit more relevant and I think that's how we take it obviously you look at the campaign and you might look at how other teams have got on against other teams so I think we're just focused on this Nations League campaign for now and yeah. then we'll just see how that goes and and try and work our best to do as well as we can in that. And then we'll let the World Cup take care of itself when we come around to that time. Yeah, nice. And then just kind of by way of almost like a, a summative point to, to sort of close us off, how far can Montserrat go? Not just this team, you know, we, we, this team's sort of been together a few years now, isn't it? But this nation as a whole, touched on it earlier there's there's a lot of eligibility amongst the english league pyramid and what you're doing is is building that profile of monster as a nation to go and play for. yeah um how, how far can 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 this nation go yeah i mean i feel that we can keep progressing i mean every mm -hmm. so often we'll play a few games and it's like oh 
a year will pass and it's yeah. like, uh, the, the squad's not getting any younger. And we look around and then you see another youngster come out or mm. one or two youngsters come out and you're like, yeah, you like, you've got good quality. Stick mm. around, you get some games at some point. But that again, that is one of the tough things where we aren't playing any non-competitive fixtures. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It is tough for the young boys to, to get minutes because they're all competitive fixture. Every fixture matters, mm -hmm. which is one thing we have tried to speak about as a group and and, and and like the FA and stuff and have identified that in terms of trying to, in the near and semi-distant future, get some yeah. friendly fixtures going mm -hmm. so that we can, we can also keep up with the world rankings yeah. as well. Yeah. Because yeah. if you're not playing even in friendlies, then you get docked mm -hmm. points. Yeah. Um, but also, and so importantly, to get the young players game time, because um, they're going to need game time going forward rather than just being thrown into these crucial ties mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I, I think that is going to be a big key for us if we can manage to get, get some fixtures. I mean, uh, what we have suggested is it may be a great, great little opening if we could try and get a fixture in the UK which saves mm -hmm. a little bit on the on the travel for for the squad and yeah. uh, but then obviously you just got to be able to logistics talking to a club and getting a stadium da, da, da. but I think if they was to be able to get a, a stadium in London you'd find loads and loads of Montserratians yeah. that, that are turning up and could get like a real real good stadium crowd and I don't know mm -hmm. how the revenue would then work Whatever, like how much goes to the FA and whatnot, but yeah, that's important. That's important for us to try and start getting some friendly games so that we can um, let some players get minutes under yeah. their belt. Uh, but again, just for us, the best way that you're going to get players coming is by continuously doing well. Um, I mean, Jamaica went and done well, and then they got like Leon Bailey. Mm -hmm. um, came out yeah. and he was playing yeah. in, um, for a top six team in German league. Um, obviously, you've got Canada that have got some real good players now. Obviously, Alfonso Davis is uh, a, a big player for them, playing for the German champions mm. every season. Um, so, he's playing. So, I mean, if we keep winning games, it's going to allow these players that are playing for your proper full-time at pro teams, yeah. whether they're in the premiership, championship and whatever. And it, and it asks the question, it says, like, mm -hmm. come and support your roots, come and play for your roots, boost the nation. Um, obviously, England's got the attraction. It's got the... Um, the limelight behind it currently, but there's a there's more to playing for mm. for Montserrat mm. than just like the the whole star side of it. It's a yeah, it's from the heart, yeah. and it and it means it means so much. And when players come, when players do come, they understand that and they feel that. I mean, like um, I'm not going to mention no names because it's not important, but you, there's a couple of players that have come recently that were humming and hawing at, like, mm. a lot along to the dates and saying, I'm not sure, like, like what's the setup like and whatnot and whatnot. And then they came out and they was just, they said, like, well, I, I don't, don't know why I even thought twice about it or yeah. why I waited so really? long. And, yeah, and it, and it, and it happens quite, quite a bit. I mean, every yeah. time a new player comes that's maybe again we alluded to it earlier who might be in a relegation battle mm. or a thing battle and the managers like questioning them then. but it's so difficult because i mean even the contract issue is a is a big issue um when you get lower down you get players on a year contract or a two year a two year contract and when you're playing these games at the end of the season and a and a player might not be under contract anymore if they were to get injured then that's gonna yeah. that's gonna kind of delay them getting a contract and that's their life that's that's players yeah. livelihoods um their bread and butter that's how they pay their mortgage pay their bills so um so even like one player did say to us this campaign he said like listen boys i, 
can't can't come out. Um, not necessarily because he was out of contract. We don't know why, but we support each other. We, yeah. We're not going to question why he can't come out. Um, obviously, it's just for good good reason that that, that they can't. Uh, as much as it's disappointing, it, it, we we understand it is difficult. We all come from the same the same backgrounds and the same hustle. It's not like we're playing championship playing playing Premiership and it's like it's either go on international or go and sit in, in Dubai or on the beach or whatever. <laughs> so so yeah, so that's where it that's where it does become tough in terms of attracting players, especially with the whole contract thing and with the game's end of season. That's why it's been been very hard since COVID. But yeah. Yeah, I mean it's just one of those things, isn't it? You're touching on friendlies and, and actually uh, it's, you know, if you can get a pitch in, in England, it's not a bad way to go. We've seen Anguilla have, have tried to do that recently, you know, trying to get yeah, some yeah. UK-based players. And I think we'll wait and see what it means in the Nations League, but I think it's I think it's certainly been good for them as a, as a unit. Um, yeah. Know, it, it gives the opportunity, like you say, for some of their players to, to perform in front of the gaffer or, or the assistant gaffer or whoever. Um, like and showcase the themselves, yeah. yeah. Well, it isn't that it isn't suddenly a World Cup qualifier like your debut was? You know what I mean? So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, nice. Tom's. It has been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Um, as as everyone will know, fourth of June, the opening game against Guyana, massive, yeah. massive game for Montserrat. But uh, but from us here at DNQ Comms, just thanks so much for joining us. And, yeah, no, thank uh, you, thank you very much. And, and it would be great to have you back after the Nations League as well. It'd be great to yeah, for sure. Let's do it. We'll, yeah. we'll get back and, and have a catch up after the campaign. See how it's going so far. Sounds fantastic. Yeah. To everyone who's uh, who's watched along, please like the video, subscribe, comment, and share. Um, and obviously, the Emerald Boys march on in the Concacaf Nations League. We'll see you next Let's time. Let's go.